Let's use the four-step solving process here. So for the state step, we want to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.05 level. So another significance level wasn't given, so we use 0.05 as our default. Our null hypothesis is that beta equals zero. And our alternative hypothesis is that beta is not equal to zero, where beta is the true slope of the population regression equation relating altitude to call duration. So in the plan step, we normally check conditions, but we already checked them on day 94. So we're ready to do a t-test for beta. Here's our computer output from day 94. Now, we actually already have our test statistic t and our p-value. That's everything we need, but let's figure out how they calculated this test statistic t. t equals our sample slope minus zero divided by the standard error of our sample slope. So from the output, our sample slope was 0.171, and we'll subtract zero from it and divide it by our standard error. That gives us about 0.988. And if we check the computer output, they got 9.89. So the differences are due to rounding. Now we know the p-value is approximately zero, but let's calculate the p-value as well. So we're gonna draw a t-distribution with 19 degrees freedom. Our test statistic 9.88 would be way out here. So our p-value is the area to the right of it. So it looks like not much area, probably a value pretty close to zero. To calculate this p-value, we're gonna press second vars and go to our distribution menu. Let's go to tcdf, and our lower limit, we're gonna keep at negative infinity. Our upper limit is 9.88, and we're gonna put 19 degrees freedom. Now, if we look back at the t-distribution we drew, this is gonna give us all of this area. Now, the total area is one, so if we take whatever value it gives us and we subtract it from one, it should give us our p-value on the other side. All right, there we go, a number really close to one. So we'll do one minus this value, and there's our p-value, it's in scientific notation. Now we're ready to conclude. With a p-value of approximately zero, which is less than any reasonable alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. There is overwhelming evidence that the true slope of the population regression equation relating altitude to call duration is not zero. That means there's strong evidence of a linear relationship. Our confidence interval was 0.1347 to 0.2073. Now, since this interval does not contain zero, there is significant evidence that there is a positive slope that relates altitude to call duration. Now for part C, we have all these values in our computer output. Always use the regular R-squared, not the R-squared adjusted. And here's S right here. And here's the standard error of our slope. We can interpret S like this. When using altitude to predict call duration, our typical prediction is off by about 24.28 milliseconds. For R-squared, 83.7% of the variation in call duration can be explained by altitude. If we look at the original scatter plot, the call durations vary. It looks like in this sample they vary from about 300 to almost 500. Now how much of that variation can be explained by the altitude? That's what R-squared tells us. Finally, we'll interpret the standard error of the slope. If we were to take many samples of size 21 and compute the least squares regression equation for each sample, our estimated slope that relates altitude to call duration would differ from the population slope by an average of 0 0.0173. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.